Okay, this is a demo of creating truss tapes with a receipt printer. The receipt printer that I use is an Epson TM88 Mark V because it has Mac compatible drivers available, which is very important to me, and because the Epson printer is uh, the most reliable simply because these receipt printers are not designed for pinpoint accuracy and we do need reasonable accuracy when we print our hang tapes so that our fixtures end up in the right place. For the purpose of this demo, I am going to use a rig from a small show that I'm going to do later on this week um, that has a couple of bits in it that are going to make this very appropriate and useful. I'm going to start with the back truss for this purpose. And on my back truss, I have um, a little bit of PA and a couple motors and some sourceful paws and some six inch fresnels. Um, it's a complete 3D everything rig with all the bits in it and everything, so I'm not playing any games here. This truss is 24 odd meters long, and so I need to get a 24 meter long piece of paper out of Vectorworks so that when I stick it to the truss, the crew knows to hang everything exactly where I want it. All right. So the best way to start, I find, is to make a line along that truss that I can take with me to my template for printing so that I have a reference to where my zero marker is. So with the line tool, let me simplify this truss a little bit. I'm just going to draw one long straight line from one end of the truss to the other. I need to select all the bits that are on that truss. So I want these motors to come with me, so I'm going to select those. And I want all of my lighting fixtures. Don't want to get caught up on the accessories, so I'm just going to turn those off. I'm just going to turn the scenic elements off as well. I want the PA, so I have a placeholder marker for my PA as well. I suppose it's just going to be easier to select everything in one go. I'll disable all the bits I don't need. I think that'll be simplest. Okay. Select the whole truss and then deselect what I don't want instead. So I don't want these subs because they're on the floor. Don't need most of these clamps and things. Don't need the stuff that's outrigged. Um, I don't need the actual speakers, I just need the markers. I don't need any of these um, gripples and so on. The gripples are for hanging a screen that goes below the truss, but uh, the position it hangs on is dependent on how the scenic company builds it, so I'm not going to worry about getting that in exact anyway. Right. Uh, I have everything that needs to carry through on this truss selected, and then I'm going to copy it, and then I'm just going to open my truss template document that I made previously and have been using extensively. Um, and this is a document that is, you know, 80 odd, 60 odd meters long and um, painstakingly has a ruler drawn on it that starts at zero and gives me a reference along the truss as well for anything that I need to add or move and so on. So I've made a, a mark every 250 millimeters. And what's significant about the 250 is, you know, A, it's a metric, and B, uh, the printer's accuracy I've found is in every. 250 millimeters, it goes out by one millimeter. So that margin of error is absolutely acceptable to me. So what is on this pipe currently is a lot of stuff that I don't need in this show. It's stuff from my last show. I'm going to erase all of that. And then I need to paste in the new stuff. And I want to make sure that I do not import this format. This is very important because I have symbols with the same name that I carry through for my lighting simple template document that gets used in my actual plans for working off. And then in this template, there are symbols that are 
with the same name but are completely different. At least their 2D representation is 2D completely different so that it can appear on the trust tape. So I'm going to make sure I do not import this format. It's all about the label legend. The symbol itself just needs to line up. So no symbol definitions, none of that, because the symbol definition is what carries my data. So I'm pasting in everything that I've had before. So I might as well just do this action for all my symbols. And I definitely want to have everything be visible. Right. See, I've carried the truss through because I left that selected, but that's fine. I'm going to erase the truss. Done. Okay, so here are all of my bits. Um, and a lot of these symbols are carried through because I haven't printed them before, because I haven't used these fixtures before, like my source for par, CP62, and my 6-inch Fresnel. But you'll see the legend has carried through. And then I have what used to be a Locus is now a marker for an ETR 115XT, which is a hanging bracket for an Acoustics 115XT. And the halftone motors that I had are a different symbol now as well because the symbols change. So to illustrate this, in this plot, um, the motor is a regular halftone motor down symbol. Great. And then I've carried it through here and it's a different symbol because it needs to fit onto a 78 millimeter wide piece of paper so it needs to yeah that's about it so in here I've got a lighting fixture this is what my lighting fixture look like in the object info palette that lighting fixture has some information attached to it instrument type it's wattage great it's position which is really only important for going to MA2 which is fine it's got a unit number which is its fixture number let me turn the labels on a bit hard to see, so be it. Um, then uh, it has a color attached to it because I want it all 201. It has a channel that is attached to Universe 1, address 22, and a circuit number. Back dimmers, uh, socket picks 2, circuit 3. Great, that's the most important information. So that is all represented on this plot in a way that everyone is familiar with um, and that I can see in the label legend manager. Uh, and the legend name, I can just edit the layout of the legend one that I use in all my symbols and use ITT standard, RP5, color in front, focus, not not necessary for my plot, but I've got a unit number that I use as my fixture number in the desk. I've got a channel, which is my DMX address and user field one, which includes my mode, which is important for my moving lights, but for demos, obviously, no mode attached. So I have to all of my fixtures applied this legend one just because it's the easiest button to hit quickly and it's easy to carry through and remember. In the trust tape template document, I have a legend as well. And the label legend manager has a legend one. I have multiple options for different things, including for cables, if I need to put socket picks, heads and stuff on the truss, which I often don't, but it has happened for sort of a pre-cable that that is extremely useful. So. You know, you can customize this in any way you like. Anyway, on one, let's edit the layout. I've edited the layout in such a way that it fits with what I do to the symbols so they end up on the truss, as in the pictures that you've seen previously. Um, unit number, focus, channel, user field, which is my mode, circuit number, which is my circuit number, all of that. And this layout is obviously dependent on how I've laid my new 2D symbols out. So, for example, in my resource browser, in this particular document, the trust tape template, I have a number of very custom 2D symbols. For example, the symbol that goes with my 19 degree source 4, the, the 3D object is exactly the same. If it's even still in there, chances are I've erased it because yeah, it's 2D only because I didn't need it anymore in this document. Um, we'll use the 2550 as an example. 3D document, the 3D symbol, sorry, is the same 3D symbol that you know you use in your other plot. The 2D symbol, which is the one that gets printed on paper in plan view, is obviously, or is in fact completely different. It is with the, the markers, the designations that are relative to the label legend that carries through from the plot into this document, and then it has a little tag to say what it is and a little crosshair to indicate that this is the point at which I would like this fixture to be hung. So as you remember a little earlier on, the source for par and the 6-inch Fresnel that I imported did not have a symbol like this attached to them. 
the symbol was still the original symbol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to use it in that source for par symbol over here. Um, if I can find that symbol, what's its name? Its name is source for par WFL. Let me find this fixture. There we go. Uh, I've modified all my symbols so they're not the stock symbols either. They are you know, my own symbols, so that they behave a little differently. Anyway, the 2D component that is currently what it should be. I'm just going to erase that and paste in the original symbol or the 2550 symbol that I had that I'm currently modifying. And then I should just rename this to be what I want it to be now. Was for par WFL. Great. And that should be that when I exit. I definitely want to make it a 2D symbol. Great. I don't need any 3D information anyway. Done. And then if I go spotlight refresh instruments, that symbol changes to that. But you'll notice that the label legend is one way and the things on the other place and it doesn't make sense so in the object info palette it's because it, the symbol is rotated 180 degrees from where it was because in its base form it's looking forward and I'm using it as a backlight it's looking the other way so I've rotated 180 degrees so if I rotate that to zero degrees it comes up correctly and all the data is there that needs to be there its focus is irrelevant because I've got my focus points labeled a, B, C, D, and so on, but so be it. The important information is there. It's unit number 21. In other words, in the MA, I type in fixture 21, please, at, at, and this light should come up. It's address universe 121. It's circuit, the circuit I want to cable to, back dimmers 2, circuit 2, and it's a source for power. If anyone can screw this up, they're going to have to leave sight. So I'm going to repeat the process for the 6 inch for now. Here it is here. Edit the 2D component, I'm going to erase the existing geometry, and I'm going to replace it with my new sort of label that's going on the truss. I'm going to change its name. This is, in fact, a 500 watt for now, just because this current supplier that I'm working with calls them that, so great. Done. That symbol is now correctly labeled. When I exit the symbol, the label changes over there and the fixture is still the same here so I need to just refresh instruments take it a minute done under control so the only thing is it's obviously facing the wrong way again so let me just rotate that to zero cool all right now you'll find that everything on this truss is as it should be they're just all over the place and that's because if you remember on this document, the original, I have some stuff on the front, I have some stuff in the middle, I have some stuff at the back of the truss, these clamps aren't necessary, because the tape only goes to one side of the truss. It's not a, they can't show me front and back, unless I choose to print a tape for the front and the back. I could do that, but I think that would be a waste of time. So going back to the template, the important thing now is to line these things up so that they end up on my paper. So importantly, this truss 20 meters long there. So let me edit my page setup to be 20 meters, 20 and a half, 2250. Just to give me a bit of space either side to account for having to tape it to stuff. Let me take this document. Put it over here, bring it into where the actual paper starts. Let me take my ruler and put my ruler to the beginning of the paper as well so that my zero marker prints at zero again. Because this thing is 40 meters long, it's obviously a very serious piece of geometry for Vectorworks to calculate whenever it moves it. So that has been known bring things to an absolute halt. So 
even though this is a MacBook Pro with a Retina display and maxed out RAM and a solid state drive, go ahead and help you if you have a slow machine. The monitor doesn't print any leading white space, so it's important that the, you leave a little bit of room for your zero marker to give you a bit of you know paper to handle before you get there. I'm just gonna actually I'm not gonna bother with that. Offset this by a hundred millimeters because we're dealing with a one-to-one -one scale document here. So one hundred millimeters will shift this entire thing by one hundred millimeters. Obviously, this will work in any units that you would like to use, including feet and inches. I don't understand those, but that's not relevant here. I've got a label here in this document for this truss because sometimes I print these ahead of time and then just come to site with it on a roll of toilet paper, for example, and can just unroll it depending on how we are operating. But I've also found that it is just easier on me um, just to put the printer on side of the truss and just print it there and then on site and as it's printing out, walk it and then once it's done, sticking it to the top of the truss and going because otherwise you end up with a 60 meter long piece of paper in your lounge and you're trying to roll it up and then it gets caught on stuff and torn up and it's a waste. So you might as well just print it on site so the label's less relevant but it could happen that you might mess it up or something and then it's always good to have a label on it anyway. Okay. Going back to my symbols, I'm just going to select all of these. Just select all and deselect the tape measure. Take the zero marker, pop it in to the zero marker here. Cool. I can actually delete this line now because I don't need it anymore. And I select everything again. I deselect the ruler. And in my spotlight, I use align and distribute from zero. My truss is 20 meters long, so I'm just going to take it to 20. And then very importantly, just align. Because otherwise you're interfering with the spacing, you want the spacing to stay. I just want to align everything to the center line so that when I stick it, it's there. So just align, bang, everything is in. As we go through, you will notice that a lot of these symbols are upside down and the legends are in the wrong place. That's easy to fix because they are just rotated the wrong way around. These two I did earlier, so they're good. This will also show you if your fixtures are you know, hanging on top of each other or something, and then it will make it easy to know that you won't have enough room on the truss. Because that legend is what, just under 250 millimeters, so Anything that doesn't fit into that is probably not going to fit on the truss either. You could top rig and so on. That's your decision. Um, change the rotation to zero, and everything lines up real nice. The PA is good. I think my motors are probably rotated 90 degrees or something. No, everything looks good. All the bits I need to put on this truss are now on my 20 meter long piece of paper. So all that's left for me to do is print it. I found that if I try and print directly from Vectorworks, the printer messes it up. It tries to print everything in, in the wrong orientation. So it prints the dead center of the document only and just that like 78 millimeters wide. Uh, and it, it really, it's no good to me. So if I to do an intermediary print, just regular print, and I select the receipt printer here, it's not connected, so it's not matter right now. And I've made a preset that just um, sets up resolution, paper orientation, um, how it needs to deal with the end of the roll and all that. I've got a, I'll attach a video on that later. Um, I'm just gonna save this as a PDF, and I'm gonna save it in this document here as the, in the trust tapes folder. Um, uh, new folder so that I have access to this later. Where is this? Uh, 
actress save. So Victorworks is going to churn out the pages. If I open this up in preview, all of my bits are there. And when I print these, all the things I need to see, or that my crew needs to see to not screw this up, are there. Stick it out one to one, spacing is correct, the data that is important to your life is there, dimmers don't have mode so that doesn't matter, even the audio guys can get this right, um, and that's really all there is to it. All I need to do is go, when I've opened this thing, file, print, select the printer, now, it, when you install the driver, it loads the right paper size. So this is the paper size that I want. Orientation upright, scale to fit, just so that it gets it in there. It's automatically scaled to 100%. Uh, I hit print and it shoots out and we start sticking as soon as it's done printing. Magic. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. Good luck and let me know if you have any questions about this.